All right, so we're continuing on with the different types of driving forces that we can have for a double replacement reaction, right? We already looked at acid-base neutralization, formation of a precipitate. Now we're going to go ahead and look at, well, what happens if we form a gaseous compound? Okay, so in this, that would be our driving force, right? The formation of a gas. Now let's go ahead and look at example because it's going to show us a little bit more explicitly what does it mean uh, for us to be able to predict that we're forming a gaseous compound, right? Because we said double replacement reactions are simply switching ion partners. Well, how could switching ion partners form something like a molecular compound that is a gas? Well, that would be a good question to ask as we try and think about this. So let's see how that can actually happen. So I'm going to look at a reaction where we have hydrochloric acid and maybe something like sodium bicarbonate. Okay, so we have hydrochloric acid, sodium bicarbonate. <clears throat> now here we have, this is like something like baking soda and we're going to add an acid to it. Well again we have two ionic compounds and we're going to look at well, what would be the ions that are going to switch here. So we're going to get hydrogen being added to our bicarbonate ion, right? This whole thing right here is an ion and then we would have our sodium combining with our chloride ion. So we get sodium chloride which is aqueous, right? Both of those ions would give us something that's soluble. And then we add hydrogen to the bicarbonate ion, we end up getting H2CO3, okay? So we look at this reaction and we think, well, we didn't form a gas, right? We got sodium chloride and we have carbonic acid, H2CO3. How is this actually going to form a gaseous compound? Well, in reality, even though we've written this as H2CO3, H2CO3, carbonic acid, actually breaks up into two other molecular compounds. It's going to break up and decompose into water. And, well, if we take water from, away from H2CO3, we're left over with carbon dioxide. Well, carbon dioxide is a gaseous compound. So if we were to take this reaction, kind of like maybe you've seen where you've made a volcano, where you've taken baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, and you've added vinegar, which is a different acid, has acetic acid in it, you get this bubbling formed. Well, that bubbling is the formation of our carbon dioxide gas. We actually see that this actually does happen, right? We form that carbon dioxide gas that comes out of our solution. So how would we write this as a complete reaction? So what I'm going to do is I would take my normal reaction that I have, right? HCl reacting with sodium bicarbonate. And that forms, right? Nothing happens to our sodium chloride. It still stays at sodium chloride. But rather than writing carbonic acid, because it's not actually there still as carbonic acid, it's actually water and carbon dioxide, I would go ahead and add to the, add this and say, well, I'm actually getting water and carbon dioxide. And so we see that the formation of that carbon dioxide right there, that is our driving force for this reaction. So again, remember, I keep coming to a driving force. There must be something that's making a reaction happen. We can't just write two ionic compounds and say it forms something, there must be something new there. We actually have to be forming something new. We see here, the new thing that we're forming that wasn't there before was carbonic, or carbonic acid, which leads us to carbon dioxide. We're also getting that water being formed there. Okay. So now as you go to this, you could think, well, how many different gases can we possibly form when we have a double replacement reaction? There's a lot of different ones that we can look at. Just note the only one that we're going to focus on in this class is recognizing that our carbon, our carbonic acid is going to break up to give us water and carbon dioxide. So that should be a trigger for us as we're writing out our double replacement reactions. We form carbonic acid. We should remember, okay, well, in reality, that actually exists as water and carbon dioxide. So I want to write out the full reaction and saying, like we have here, hydrochloric acid, sodium bicarbonate, gives us our sodium chloride, just like a normal replacement. But that carbonic acid, H2CO3, breaks up to H2O and carbon dioxide. So now we've covered those three types of driving forces, right? Acid-base neutralization, precipitate formation, and now the formation of a gas. So in our next video, we're going to look at how do we illustrate these reactions to show what's reacting with what, 
How do we know it's actually in solution? What ions or molecules are there? And then maybe just a reaction that says, this is reacting with this. Maybe this specific ion's important and this other ion. But we can ignore all the rest of that in trying to illustrate those reactions.